everybody. Welcome into another episode of HBCU Huddle. I am CJ Hurt, joined alongside, as always, by Mike Wallace. Mike, how's everything going, man? This all I'm going to say. Ah. This all I'm going to say. Yes. Ah. Camera right there. Camera center right there. What's this say? Grambling Tigers. That's all I'm going to say, man. That's all I'm going to say. Looking forward to a great episode, Shocking. man. We jam-packed. We jam-packed today. Shocking now, Every win. week, every week, this brother wears either a Tuskegee hat, a Tuskegee shirt, a Tuskegee hoodie. Well, where, where, where's your gear? I'm saving my gear for the Southern Heritage Classic, Mike. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot for the hoodie. <laughs> We'll, there talk, we go. we'll talk about that. Shocking win. Shocking win by Grambling State at home against Tuskegee. It surprised the hell out of me. Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll also talk about and be highlighting the Southern Heritage Classic, which is going on this Saturday right here in Memphis, Tennessee. So we have that Fred Jones, the uh, runner of the Southern Heritage Classic, the promoter, the person who puts it on year after year for 35 years. We will talk to him about the this year's Southern Heritage Classic. And there's a cool exhibit about the Southern <coughs> Heritage Classic at the National Civil Rights Museum. The celebrating 35 years of Memphis HBCU tradition exhibit. We had a pleasure, Mike and I, to go over there and uh, shoot some things and take a look at it, uh, sneak peek, if you will. Yeah. So that was, we'll talk about that and so much more. But Mike, first and foremost, if you had to let me get to it, Mike, I would have told you congratulations. Congratulations on the, on the win in the Mike Wallace, C.J. Hurt Classic. <laughs> the inaugural go. Mike Wallace, C.J. Hurt there Classic. You, there you go. I don't know if y'all want another one. So it's, it's not going to be inaugural. We ain't going to beat y'all down I, like that I, every year. I think we need the money. So, yes, we will take another that, that's one. True. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it started off, man. It, it should have it, it was. I think it was 37-20. Tuskegee did some things in the second half of that game. Grambling kind of just slept, walked through the rest of it. But, hey, Wait, we'll, take a, we'll take a win. We'll take a win. 37-20. And the... That, that was the end of the... That was the final. That was the yeah, final. it was like 33 to nothing. In That's the what I'm saying. Half, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Ended up 37-20. So, Tuskegee came and, and put some things on uh, in the fourth quarter. And, and you know, again, it is what it is. But I'm glad that that classic uh, ended up the way it did, man. We've been talking about it and looking forward to it. And, hey, 1-0. I should get an extra victory in our pick six this no, week because of that. that. We're not doing that. No. <laughs> all right. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> not at all. It'll be interesting to see when we get to it where Grambling is in this week's box to row uh poll and where they sit on my ballot after that it was a lot of those type games this week mike a lot of the good d2 teams taking on uh fcs schools and we'll we'll talk about more of the results i know virginia state virginia union hampton and mm -hmm. and winston salem state north carolina ant uh all norfolk state all had those types of games so we'll we'll talk about that more a little bit later on uh, uh andrew body yeah second straight year one game into the season, his season is now over, season-ending injury. When you saw the news, Mike, what went through your mind? Just that, I mean, it dropped right after our last week's huddle. Yeah. Like, right after we got off, you know, re recorded our session, man, and then we got the news, and it was devastating. It was shocking. Uh, he hurt his shoulder in that game. Um, and, and it's one of those situations where, you know, again, he came in and we saw the upside that that Alabama State team was going to have uh, with him at quarterback. Not only did they lose Andrew Body, they also lost the, uh, the other guy that played in that season opener because Coach Eddie Robinson is now going with younger t two younger options now. So it's, it's some chaos right there early on adversity for Alabama State. Um, he does expect Eddie Robinson to coach. Eddie Robinson Jr. went on the uh, SWAT coaches teleconference this week and said that he does expect a full recovery and for Andrew Body to be the quarterback for Alabama State next season. So all signs are pointing to him getting through this and then coming back and hitting the reset button next season. It's always hard when an athlete like that just has their body betray him. Yeah. And that's, that's what's happened to Andrew Body the past two seasons. Don't forget when the last full season he played, uh, got all the way through a season, he was pretty dynamic and really fun to sit down yeah. and watch. Um, and it's I hate it. You know, I'm I'm a big Andrew Body stand. I think that when healthy, he is as special an athlete and as special a quarterback as they come. Yeah. I hate to to see it. And we send thoughts and prayers to Andrew Body as he goes through recovery. But now Alabama State had that's put a big old monkey wrench into their quest to be yeah. uh, SWAC champions. So, so much of my critiques of them was that defense is going to be great. What is that offense going to be? Um, that that offense is going to be good because Andrew Body is there. Well, now Andrew Body is not there. What yeah. is that offense going to be? What can they do 
in your mind, Mike, to, to make sure that the offense, at the very least, doesn't hurt them going forward? Well, it, it sounds like, and, and going by, you know, Eddie Robinson Jr.'s, you know, comments to the media this week, that there's still a lot to be figured out at the quarterback. Mm. I mean, you talk about you went into the season playing two guys, right? And, 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 and now those two guys aren't on your radar, and you got two other guys coming in, including a freshman. Um, in the mix now. And so that's four different quarterbacks that you're circulating through in the first two weeks of the season. You really got a quarterback issue. And, and that's, the, that's the, uh, the troubling part of it. You know, expectations were sky high for Alabama State. Um, they're going to have to really do some things to, to turn this season around and salvage it. You know, it's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, again, I got to figure out what he's going to do at quarterback. He's got to figure that out as a coaching staff first, and then we can evaluate them once we figure out what they have at quarterback because that's key. You said defense is set. The offense has the biggest question mark right now, and now they're right back to where they were the last two seasons. Absolutely, absolutely. We know a team who has a quarterback, Gramlin State, yep. uh, put on a, a show against Tuskegee. Their quarterback, Miles Crawley, earned Offensive Player of the Week honors in the SWAC as we move to the Player of the Week honors portion of the show. Miles Crawley uh, gained 304 passing yards and four touchdowns and that big time shocking upset victory over the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. Uh, Traquan Thomas, Alabama State defensive end, three tackles, three forced fumbles, or excuse me, three sacks and three forced fumbles in their matchup against Miles. Uh, over in the MEAC, the Offensive Players of the Week of the MEAC, there were co-offensive uh, players of the week over there. We'll start with Jarrett Hunter, Howard running back, 126 rushing yards and three touchdowns in their game. And Jalen Daniels, Norfolk State, 231 total yards and three total touchdowns. For no folks, state for Coach Odom's up there. Defensive MEAC Player of the Week, Terrence Holland, Howard, eight tackles, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. We go to the HBCU Huddle Player of the Week, a player of the week that I decided. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. When, when we started talking about Virginia Union and Hampton, if you had told me last week uh -huh. that it will be a running back to get this award, I'd be like, oh, Byers. Byers. Absolutely. Byers, who had, yes. you know, a pretty decent game, 100-plus yards rushing. But uh -huh. this right here, Elijah Burris, 35 carries, 145 rushing yards, and two uh, rushing touchdowns. Touchdown. Yep. He ends up with the player of the week for HBCU Huddle and a big-time win for the, the Pirates of Hampton. Yeah, when you look at that, the carries, man, I mean, he toted that rock 35 times. Okay that is a lot. That is controlling the tempo of the offense. That's ball control. That's get, picking up and moving the chains and picking up first downs when you need them. And Hampton had to fight to get out of that game. It wasn't an easy one for them by any stretch, but because they were able to control the ground attack uh, by that young man who ended up getting rewarded uh, with uh, MEAC, excuse me, the uh, play, HBCU Huddle Player of the Week honors. Shout out to him. Big time performance right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's move on to the polls before yes. we get to the media polls. We'll go to my ballot, my week two ballot. I have FAMU, North Carolina Central, one, two, Howard, three, Jackson State, four, Texas Southern, five, Morgan State, six, Tennessee State, seven, Gramlin State, eight, Alabama A&M, nine, and Alcorn State, 10. Mike, when you see my <laughs> poll, anything stand out to you? No, I think you're fair. I think you're pretty fair uh, in that situation. You know, when you look at everything and, and how it lined up, you know, I, I, I get it. I get it. You, you're it's, not going to inch Grambling up any further than what you had him pretty much uh, before. I mean, they they, you know they, what I'm they did get that big time win, <laughs> that shocking victory over Tuskegee yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, man. I but hear I mean, they stormed the field at Grambling <laughs> after that win against Tuskegee. Not quite. Not quite. But I tell you what, Texas Southern is, is the surprise so far through two weeks of the season. Um, you know, with them and what they were able to do. And, and it's one of those situations where I'm looking to see what Chris Dishman and, and that defense is going to continue to do this season. They're going to be a team that we have to watch now and pay attention to coming out of the Swag West. So, yeah, I, I, like your, I like your top 10. That ballot is pretty strong. It's a weird time of the year in college football. Things are just now getting started. Yeah. It's, it's doubly weird to me for to try and do HBCU, FCS type of polls because so many of these teams – are playing by games. Either yeah. they're the ones buying the games or they're the one being paid to go play the game. So it's tough because it's not like on like. I'll yeah. use Arkansas Pine Bluff because it's fresh on my mind as the example. Arkansas Pine Bluff right now, margin of victory, a point differential of plus three. 
Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, you stop and you realize they <laughs> lost by 70 to Arkansas, but then they beat Arkansas Baptist by 73, right? So it is, wait, has Arkansas Pine Bluff has played two games and those two teams couldn't be further from right. what right. Arkansas Pine Bluff is as a program or what the teams, the caliber of Arkansas Pine Bluff in the SWAC, what they are, yeah. right? Like I can't imagine anybody in the SWAC beating Arkansas Pine Bluff by 70. I also can't imagine Arkansas Pine Bluff beating anybody by 70 either. So that's that's where we are this time of the season. FAMU has played a lot of like on like. And so they, they're one. North Carolina Central, I think, either just had a bye game or got one coming up. Howard played a, a bye game mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's hard to kind of gauge what teams are right now. I look forward to seeing that clear up as the season goes on. But as of right now, that's my my ballot. Now, as we go to the box to row poll, there's, mm -hmm. there are a little bit of little differences. Mm -hmm. Not in who's one, two, or three. FAMU won North Carolina Central two. Howard is third in the box to row, followed by Alabama State, who did receive one first place vote this week from the media. Jackson State is at five. Virginia Union falling three spots after their loss to Hampton. The six Tennessee State holds firm at seven, even though they got blown out by North Dakota State. Morgan State comes in at nine. They're up one from 10 last week. And South Carolina State finds their way into the poll this week after not being ranked there. Mike, what are your thoughts about the official box of row media poll? I, I like uh, South Carolina State uh, getting some respect. Chinnisbury picked up his first victory. Uh, they beat the Citadel, which is not an easy uh, game to play at all. So they kind of bounced back from their week one loss to Florida A&M. Um, and then, no, no, they didn't play Florida A&M in, in the week one. Um, but they, they bounced back from their week one loss and then got a big time victory over the Citadel right there. So um, they played Florida A&M in week two. Yeah. Um, and, and they play Florida and them close. So I think South Carolina State is going to have something to say at 10. They're not going to be at 10 long. We're going to see them climb up that pole pretty quickly. You're making fun of me for having Grambling at eight. At least I had them ranked. At they're, least you had them in. Yeah, they're yeah. others receiving votes. They're ninth in the others receiving votes category. That's all right. That's all right. Give it a couple weeks. Get, see, no, nobody was impressed with the victory over Tuskegee. I, it was a big so time maybe victory, that was though, it. Mike. Maybe that was it. it. Was maybe that was it. It was a big time victory. <laughs> uh, we got more to get to on, on the show uh, for those of you who have been watching the show, uh, you know this isn't our typical mm -hmm. studio setup. We'll be back in the Built for Tough studio on the other side of this to talk to uh, Fred Jones, the founder of the Southern Heritage Classic, the man who is behind the classic, the man who's in charge of putting it on and all the, the funds of the, the funds, the fun <laughs> of the game and the fun of the week leading up to the classic. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. When it's all on the line, you turn to the strong, the stable, the unwavering, to those with a history of raising their performance to meet the moment. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August 31st, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Maxwell in concert. The Serenade Tour. October 16th at FedEx Forum. Maxwell. With special guest Jasmine Sullivan. And October London. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. You don't miss Maxwell Live. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August 31st, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC.
Welcome back in Magic of YouTube, Magic of Podcasting. We are now in the Built for Tough studios. Uh, CJ Hurt, HBCO Huddle, Mike Wallace. Please, right now, to be joined by Fred Jones, the founder of the Southern Heritage Classic. Southern Heritage Classic celebrating its 35th year in Memphis, Tennessee. Mr. Jones, welcome back, man. We appreciate it. Well, I'm glad to be here. 35 years, man. That's pretty special. <laughs> it is. It is. What, what, how have you been able to have something last this long, right? Like the, the longevity of the Southern Heritage Classic. A lot of classics have come and gone and then come back in that 35 year span. How have you been able to make sure that the Southern Heritage Classic lasts and is, has staying power in Memphis? Well, it was built for, for Memphis. You know, it was built for these two schools, for the two schools originally with Jackson State and Tennessee State. And my goal was to build something that had credibility, that had sustainability, had a good foundation. And out of that, talking about the game, because they had played previous years, they had a history themselves, uh, wanted to have something that had a good, strong foundation. And, and with, with that thought, we came up with the Southern Heritage Classic. So. The original goal was achieved. People always ask me that I think it was going to be like this. I, I just, you know, you don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> For y'all, you're just trying to get through the first year. And when you look at it, that, that first year, <laughs> 35 <laughs> years ago, right? There's a whole generation of people uh, who have come into the world since then and, and have grown up <laughs> uh, with, with the Southern Heritage Classic here. And, and I was reminded by one of our VPs earlier when I was telling them that you were going to come in and join us. And, and, and they were like, man, you know, Fred's been around a long time. He, you know, he's responsible for helping us get the Grizzlies here. So, you know, your, your legacy, obviously, with the Southern Heritage Classic, but you were also instrumental in, in the group that made Memphis viable for an NBA franchise as well. Oh, uh, yeah. i uh, tell you a quick story about that, you know, because I was a part of the original pursuit team. Yeah. And, you know, in order for us to get, the Grizzlies or the NBA to come to Memphis, we had to build a new arena, uh, you know, and that was a challenge in and of itself, but trying to convince people that this was possible. Mm -hmm. And we had to, we ended up using the classic uh, because obviously the Grizzlies were still in Vancouver and trying to get people to put up $250 deposit and so the Grizzly, I mean, I'm sorry, the Classic, uh, you know, what we had in our database and what have you, because the Grizzlies didn't obviously didn't have one. Right, you know? right. So the quick story is that we went on the air on WDIA for two hours uh, that weekend, and you couldn't answer the phone fast enough. Uh, you couldn't. It, it was just a whole, it changed the whole dynamic that particular weekend when we involved the classic in the way that we did. So when you look back, Mr. Jones, over, we, we, we've visited the uh, National Civil Rights Museum. We saw the phenomenal, phenomenal exhibit there, you know, um, over 35 years paying homage to the Southern Heritage Classic from tailgating to, you know, the games itself, to the legacy of the people who have gone to those HBCUs, the history of those HBCUs in and of itself. And I don't think for those four or five schools that have been involved, they can't tell the story of their athletic success without including the Southern Heritage Classic in it. How much sort of joy and pride do you take in that and the wonderful team that you put together year after year to keep doing this? Yeah. <laughs> You know, the, the, the one thing that's consistent every year about the classic is smiles. Mm -hmm. When you talk to people, they have got a smile on their face. Whether they come to the game or they, they don't come to the game, it's a good positive something for Memphis. And when you started digging into the history, like they did at the National Civil Rights Museum, there are other points, like for instance, the first show that was at the FedEx Forum was Usher on the weekend of the Southern Heritage Classic. So oh, I did not know that. First, the first show here was Usher on the Friday night of the Southern Heritage Classic. So you keep talking, it'll be a lot, a lot more smiles <laughs> because this event, this community, 
we have, you know, banded together, not only for the Southern Heritage Class of the Grizzlies, but just themselves, this, you know, this is a positive, uh, a positive event for the Classic, and after 35 years, it still is. Mr. Johnson, you had all of that stuff, like everything in there. We were talking to the curators of the exhibit. They said that, yeah, we had to go to Fred Jones to get this. He has all of this stuff. Do you have more? Is, oh, there, yeah. is there more memorabilia? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when you talk about the first T-shirt and the first – the first uh, game program, you know, uh, and and as I tell the story, when we started this idea, it was a blank sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And look where we are now. Mm -hmm. Come past the Grizzlies, FedEx Forum, now the National Civil Rights Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told a story about what happened with me that involved 1968 and how the impact it was on me personally. Uh, but no, there's way more. I, I think that uh, first let me say congratulations to the people at the museum because I kind of stayed out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's just like colors. You look at a color and one color is crimson and one color is, looks like it's red or, you know, I, I can't tell the difference. So mm -hmm. same thing with creative people. You had to just kind of let the creative people do what they do. Mm -hmm. And I, I, they did an excellent job. There was no criticism there. So I'm just pleased with that, very pleased. The exhibit is called Celebrating 35 Years of a Memphis HBCU Tradition. It is at the National Civil Rights Museum right here in Memphis, Tennessee at the Lorraine Motel. Get, if you got a chance, get there. If you don't got a chance, make a chance, get there. It is very, very important to, to go through and see, and it's fun, right? right? Like the, the way that they were able to capture the fun of the Southern Heritage Classic really stood out uh, to, to me. Now, where are we at for next year's Classic? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's never too soon to start looking ahead, is well, it? Like, where, where are we at with that as it stands with the team? We won't start until sept so September 15, 2024, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is the day after this Classic. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that are going on uh, around, you know, the stadium and mm -hmm. And trying to stay on that, on point with that, and for anybody who has ever gone through a change, you know, here you were able to make the change, and the building was closed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we try to do this on the fly. I mean, it won't be finished, projected to be finished until September 2026, mm -hmm. and most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. They, they thought once they saw the wall come down and. The, in the, in the West Side uh, Tower, um, and, you know, it's like, y'all going to be ready for the game this year? They didn't understand, <laughs> you know. So uh, in hindsight, I wish we had a little bit more time to explain to people what is going on. Mm -hmm. Like here, you're saying, well, we closed we getting ready for the production side of it and make, the, you know. And by here, you mean FedEx form. FedEx form. Right. You okay. know, that the you can explain to people what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we haven't explained to them every day because of what happened with the construction. But again, uh, I had to experience what kind of settled me down is that I walked down on the field. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're going to play football here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nothing changes. The goalposts, mm -hmm. the lines on the field, all of that is in place. Mm -hmm. You know, the other things around it, you know, I had a situation where People are going to be amazed this year and have something to get used to. Both bands are, are seated and playing on the same side of the field. Uh, oh, here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Depending on where your seats are. <laughs> well, TJ, good point. I hadn't thought about that. But it's, it's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we got to try to navigate, you know, try to manage all the little details, mm -hmm. you know, aside from who's coming to the game, where people are gonna sit, how the band's gonna get in, mm -hmm. which way everybody's gonna go, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And you and, and you don't have a lot of time to, to do it. They just started to really the process probably five or six weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So now out of respect out of respect to the work that still has to get done and, and I know you say, you know, you don't relax 
all the way up through it. Like you're still working no matter what all the way through. So I all day, for, every day. That's yes, my goal. <laughs> for, for, for what, what's coming in these next couple of days and once this game is over with. Um, is, is your intention, is it fair to, I don't want to project, but is it fair to say your intention is to obviously continue forward with Tennessee State and then figure out what other matchup they can have? Or is it a blank slate after this year? And you well, have to it's it not completely blank, you know. Mm-hmm. Is the HBCU world. I think in order for this to have the longevity way past me is, mm-hmm. you know, it needs to be an HBCU event in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. That's why it was so important when the idea, and Jay Henderson is here, when we started talking about exhibition and if it's possible and what have you, uh, to, to actually be at the Never, Never Civil Rights Museum was wasn't the wasn't wasn't the first thought. We just said we ought to do this, but we needed to be able to show people what this is about, what the HBCU world is about. Mm-hmm. And when I when I was a kid, I went to t- Tennessee State for saw the game. I happened to see the game when I was a sophomore at Booker T. Washington High School, uh, with Bob Hayes was playing mm-hmm. with Florida A and M. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was magic, man. You mm-hmm. know. And so I think it's always been magic. And another point, most people don't know that Grambling actually played the halftime of the very first Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They were one I, of the bands. I knew that. <laughs> okay, I'm a well, Grambling guy. I'm, uh, I'm a Grambling grad. I, right. I, I switched T-shirts, man, from the last <laughs> segment. I have my Grambling shirt on, but yes. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, the HBCUs has been around for a long time, and I'm just glad we are able to do something with the Southern Heritage Classic to, to preserve the, that history. And the thing that we wanted to do is present it in its truest form. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to change the game. The college football is changing right before our eyes right now mm-hmm. uh, and has been for many years. And, mm-hmm. it, and so we wanted to have something that, that, is, that you can view long term. Mm-hmm. And I think that it would you know, be a shame that if we didn't put something together that would preserve that and present it, and it again in its truest form. These mm-hmm. they playing football, they got the great hat. Nobody, I don't care how big the school is in America, nobody has a halftime like a HBCU halftime oh, absolutely. bands. Absolutely. Okay. I mean that's not that's not being boastful. That's what's a fact. That's true. That's true. Uh, That's one, true. I, I had to mention this. I went to a game once with uh, with Ohio State. I can't remember uh, in Arkansas uh-huh. okay. at this at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. And part of the thing I was do I've done for years is go around and watch everybody else and see what they're doing. And Ohio State was the closest band that I've that I've heard that. Yeah. They come close to an HBCU yep. band. Absolutely. Even Absolutely. the uh, even the what you could maybe say the lower level HBCU band, lower level meaning smaller school and what have you. But nobody sounds like an HBCU band. Right. They just don't they don't have the same they don't have the same style and whatever. So when you see this each and every year, oh man, you know, you know, last year, you know, there's HBCU we changed schools. Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff came out and did their thing, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, uh, amazingly, uh, in the research, a lot of the band directors in the Memphis area are graduates of UAPB. Mm-hmm. So the the HBCU influence just in this community is pretty big. Yeah, absolutely, it is. One of my favorite moments from the the classic last year was they, they the bands of are, are of course battling, and I like to sit by the bands and I alternate sides of the field depending on the year. Last year I was sitting by Tennessee State and Arkansas Pine Bluff just kept playing over them, playing over them, playing <laughs> over them, and then they went to do best band in the land, and that's when Tennessee State, that's when the aristocrat a band stood. I was like, no, we're the best band in the land, and uh, the cacophony of sound, and it was just a beautiful moment, really, really fun, and that's part of the things that you get from the Southern Heritage Classic. It's bigger than just the results on the field. It is the band, it is the the food, it is the camaraderie, it is the tailgate. And speaking of the tailgate, we lost one of the voices of the tailgate. Frankie Beverly of Frankie Beverly and Mays passed away yesterday. Um, I know you had a relationship. What was it like with 
uh, Frankie Beverly and and the the dynamic that you two had? Well, it, it was it was always with Frankie. It's like all, everybody from that era, and I've been around a long time to see all of them, from BB King to to you name it, Bobby Bland, just a, the Memphis group. But they always took pride in their performances. They're going to give you a show, mm -hmm. you know, give you a performance, give you their best. And it was always, when you watch uh, Frank in the last days, his voice wasn't the same and what have you. But it didn't make a difference because everybody sung all the songs. <laughs> Right. You know, you go to the right. show, it's right. like, what's your, who's the show you're watching? <laughs> you're watching the audience, you're watching Frankie. But he had a relationship, and that's what you wanted to build. That's what we built with Southern Heritage Classic, a good relationship. Mm -hmm. to, you know, and through all the things that Frankie, and I'm glad they were able to do the farewell tour, and mm -hmm. he was there, and the last appearance was at Essence, uh, and again, it's, it was just something that was, it, I, it slowed me down this morning, yeah. but it lifted me up because, you know, you get so tired during this time, but you know, it was like, you know, Frankie would want to put on the show. He wanted to make sure that everything's right. And that's what I want to do for the classic. So Frank is, Played a lot of, we played a lot of shows together. In fact, the last big show at the Coliseum, at South Coliseum, was 2006 with Frankie Beverly and Mays and the OJs. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, you have a lot of fun memories, but the, the most of all for me personally, he was a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. You know, this, he did his show, he, 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 he perfected his, Craft. He wrote some really good songs. We Are One is one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. You know, are we are we doing favorite Frankie Beverly songs? Because <laughs> Joy and Pain is mine. Give me Joy and Pain, Mike. What would yours be? I, you know what? There's not a favorite because you just play the playlist. And yeah, let it go. Like yeah. you can put Frankie Beverly on for 90 minutes, and everything that plays, the quality is the same yeah. all the way through it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, he was a, again. Um, he was a really, really nice guy, mm -hmm. you know, and and I think that's that's what came off uh, to the audience. That's what everybody that's heard the news this morning, they're feeling a little bit sad, but they, they're looking back on the times, the last time that they saw Frankie Beverly, mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to live with, What that's what we are going to live with for the rest of our lives. Mr. Jones, that we could talk to you for another, I don't know, hour and a half or two, man. We appreciate you taking yes, time out. Yes. Busy, busy week for you. I'll be there. Mike will be there. You should be there as well. If you're in the area or surrounding areas, get out to the Southern Heritage Classic and get over to the National Civil Rights Museum and check out, check out that exhibit honoring Mr. Fred Jones and the Southern Heritage Classic. When we get back on the other side, we will uh, discuss more in depth the, the classic this week and we'll give you our pick six pick sixes. We're leaving Mike the Built for Tough Studios to go to the other studio. Uh, but we have great content still coming. Don't go anywhere. When it's all on the line, you turn to the strong, the stable, the unwavering, to those with a history of raising their performance to meet the moment. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August 31st, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Maxwell in concert. The Serenade Tour. October 16th at FedEx Forum. Maxwell with special guest. Don't forget 
Jasmine Sullivan and October London. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Maxwell Live. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August 31st, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Welcome back in HBCU Huddle, CJ Hurt, Mike Wallace. Special thank you to Fred Jones for being kind enough to fit us into his busy schedule ahead of the Southern Heritage Classic this Saturday. We've got some, some before we get to more news about the Classic, we got some sad news coming out of uh, the music and entertainment space. We've got a true icon of not just HBCUs, not just blackness, but of American music. Frankie Beverly has passed away. Yeah. Uh, sad news. When we, we were over at the National Civil Rights Museum, Mike, and we kept hearing songs by uh, <laughs> Frankie Beverly. He is an, an icon of the tailgate. If we had a, a Hall of Fame of tailgate, right? Just a Hall of Fame of HBCU tailgates or black tailgates, black cookouts. Frankie Beverly and Mace would absolutely be in there because they are iconic. And so I just we just wanted to take a moment to say uh, RIP to Frankie Beverly and a special thank you to to all of us for all of the, the art that you created over the years that still lasts with us today. Oh, yeah. There's not a cookout. There's not a tailgate. There's not a family reunion. There's not a, 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 a Memorial Day. There's not a you know, just beach day uh, where you're not going to hear Frankie Beverly's music and Maze. And he's one of those artists where, you know, it's it's hard for me, like even when we look at it now, like artists gets passed down from generation to one, mm -hmm. one generation to the next. You know, my Frankie Beverly and Maze was was a group that my parents passed down to me. And I, I, I enjoyed them just as much as my parents did. Right. I'm trying to find that kind of I, I guess New Edition will be a group that I grew up with and that I'm pass, I pass down to my kids, okay. right? And so there's going to be generational, uh, uh, you know, entertainers like that. And Frankie Beverly was definitely one of them. I had a chance to go see him. And, um, you know, he was one of those guys on your bucket list where, you know, your folks used to always say, man, have you ever been to a parliament and Funkadelic concert? Have you ever been to, you know, a Maze and Frankie Beverly concert? There's nothing like them. And I had a chance to go uh, before the pandemic to see him. And uh, what an awesome time. Everyone stood up the entire time. You know you every you single song, up. every single song you yep. know. And, um, man, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to have some Frankie Beverly on the playlist as soon as we get done with this. Absolutely. And it's not just because of the passing, but also it's, it's classic. It's good music. It's, it's good, good music. It's good yeah. music. Great it's music. It's perfect music right now to yes. listen to because it's pleasant outside and all yep. you want to do is be outside and you need the outside playlist. He is absolutely all over all of my outdoor playlists and it is Southern Heritage Classic and you know you'll hear that song depending on where your tailgate is yep. five or six different times yep. because the other tailgates will also be playing that song. Speaking of songs being played at tailgates, Mike and I had a chance to go to the celebrating 35 years of a Memphis HBCU tradition exhibit over at the National Civil Rights Museum, where we preview the Southern Heritage Classic. And we talked about the classic. We talked some Frankie Beverly and Mays as well. Here it is right now. What's going on, everybody? CJ Hurt, Mike Wallace, right here in, what do we call this, Mike? What is Man, this? I know exactly what it is. The Southern Heritage Classic celebrating 35 years of HBCU Memphis tradition. It's the exhibit at the National Civil Rights Museum right here in the heart of Memphis. We walked through here and we've been setting up here for a minute and I'm still wild by everything that is in here. If you're in Memphis, if you're coming to Memphis, you have to make a stop right here at this exhibit. It's the only one of its kind in the nation. And for 35 years, you, you're gonna see artifacts, you're gonna see games, you're gonna see tailgating, you're gonna see the history of what a HBCU classic looks like. Thanks in large part to founder Fred Jones and everything he's put into this Southern Heritage Classic for the last 35 years. It's all here, all the teams, all the tailgating information, all the signs, all the artifacts, you gotta come check this interactive experience out. Absolutely, absolutely. And this Saturday is the 35th annual Southern Heritage Classic featuring Tennessee State versus Arkansas Pine Bluff. Arkansas Pine Bluff 
Uh, coming off a big time win last week, Mike. I do believe it was their first time playing Arkansas Baptist, the other HBCU in the state of Arkansas. They beat them 73 to nothing. So Arkansas Pine Bluff so far on the season has a 70 point win and a 70 point loss on the other side, Mike. Tennessee State, after getting Eddie George's first opening season win of his tenure, fell um, on the road to North, North Dakota State last weekend so they're looking to bounce back with a win against another swag team mike what are you most looking forward to seeing in this matchup between the golden lions and the tigers well i'll tell you something that i heard from both coach eddie george of tennessee state and coach alonzo hampton of uapb after some skittish and extreme performances in both of their first two games both coaches are saying we'll find out what we're really made of and what kind of team we have on saturday right here in memphis because again you had tennessee state blew out Mississippi Valley State in the opener, then got blown out at North Dakota State. UAPB got blown out at Arkansas, as you mentioned, and then blew out Arkansas Baptist. So you really don't know what you have. This is the first time these teams are gonna be facing a like-minded competition uh, against each other. And we saw how the game played out last year, CJ. It was a one possession game all the way to the final drive. And it was a turnover that was created. Tennessee State took it back, a block kick back and scored to make it a 10 point game. But both of these teams are looking at this game, this Southern Heritage Classic as a measuring stick. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why this game is our HBCU Huddle Game of the Week. And as we look at the tail of the tape, Tennessee State all time record of 555, 288 and 33. Right now they are one and one. Notable alum Rufus Thomas, I don't know if you guys heard about him, stacks record stand up, player to watch, Draylon Ellis. We'll have more on him in a minute. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff all time record of 340 451 and 44. They are also one and one. Um, notable alum John Stubblefield, for those of you who don't know, noted jazz musician, one of the jazz greats. Player to watch, Makai Hagans, who first game against Arkansas, 11 to 23, 423 yards, no touchdowns. Then next game against Arkansas Baptist, video the, game, numbers. the quarterback, 15 to 22, 350 yards and two touchdowns. Mike, I want to talk to you about Draylon for a moment because you had a chance to sit down with Draylon Ellis uh, ahead of their game against North Dakota State coming off a week where he was named Big South OVC Player of the Week. Draylon Ellis from this part of the town.